So let's solve this problem. We have moist air at a temperature of 30 degrees C and a pressure of 100 kPa and 50% relative humidity enters a heat exchanger operating at steady state with a mass flow rate of 600 kilograms per hour and is cooled at constant pressure to a final temperature of 20 degrees C at the exit. Kinetic potential energy effects can be ignored. Determine the exit temperature below which condensation will occur. Okay, and then the rate of heat transfer. So here's our, uh, our uh, heat exchanger. And we're coming in at state one and leaving at state two. And the uh, information is given such that we have, uh, if you want, let's just organize it in a table. Here's our inlet state one. We're given our temperature dry bulb in degree C to be 30. And then at exit at state two, it's 20 degrees C. Our pressure in KPA is 200. We read the problem over. There's nothing about it pressure drop so we assume that the pressure stays 200 kPa throughout and we have a relative humidity of uh, 50 percent all right so to solve for part a we have to find that temperature below which condensation will occur that's a fancy way of just saying calculate the dew point temperature for the inlet condition so what's our dew point temperature for the inlet condition state one. Well, how do I calculate that dew point temperature? Well, it's calculated by first determining what is the partial pressure of the water vapor in our mixture, and then saying at what saturation pressure or what temperature do I need in order such that the saturation pressure is equal to that partial pressure of the vapor. So this would be the dew point temperature, or another way of writing it, the temperature dew point is equal to T sat at that actual partial pressure of the water vapor in the mixture. Okay, so either way, these work. So what do we do? Well, let's find the partial pressure of the water vapor in the mixture. Well, at 50% relative humidity, I find PSAT at the 30 degrees C. At 30 degrees C, that comes in at 4.246 kPa. I multiply by the relative humidity to find PV, 2.123. And then you would calculate, use this equation right here to say, what is that dew point temperature in degree C? Well, it would be the saturation temperature at that pressure, and it comes in at 18.4 degrees C. So the temperature dew point is 18.4 degrees C. That's our answer to part A. So if we're cooling and cooling and cooling, if we get down below, at or below 18.4, then what happens? you're going to condense. You're going to have some liquid form. You better have a drip pan in here to catch the liquid and take the liquid out. But for this problem, it comes out at 20 degrees C. Because it's coming out at 20 degrees C, it's above the dew point, so we don't have any liquid going out. Okay, well, the next question is, what's that rate of heat transfer? Well, we'd have a control volume and we do a energy balance for that control volume. So, and I'm gonna show the Q dot is being removed because that is the direction of the heat transfer. It's being removed from the control volume. So maybe I write it down here. The Q dot is equal to, and you can write it, let's do it as two components. Let's focus on the dry air and then focus on the water vapor. All right, so we have the mass flow rate of the dry air times the enthalpy of the dry air coming in at one, leaving at two. That's all just the enthalpy of dry air. And then we have the mass flow rate of the vapor coming in because there's no condensation. That's what's also leaving. Then we have the enthalpy of the vapor coming in. I'm going to put a 
h of g at 1 minus h of g at 2. So those are straight out of the book. Um, so this would be the uh, mass flow rate of the dry air times. And now you have a choice how you want to model this. You could put C sub P T1 minus T2. That's how much energy is re required to cool just the dry air. And then you could also put the uh, humidity ratio coming in, which is the same as humidity ratio going out, times H of G1 minus H of G2. That all works. Or you could put the mass flow rate of dry air, and you can combine like this. You could put C sub P times T1 minus T ref plus omega H G1 plus C sub P T2 minus, well, that's a bad looking T2, try it again, T2 minus T reference plus omega H G2. And we'll close parentheses, and then we'll focus. We'll say, well, this is kind of a mixture enthalpy at the inlet state one, and this is a mixture enthalpy at state two. And this is what the book uses actually in psychrometric charts as well. And what they do is they put a reference temperature of zero degrees C, which is 298 Kelvin. No, yeah, 273, sorry, 273 Kelvin. Oof, let's try and write that again. 273 Kelvin for this reference. Um, either way, you can go or um, we could even do it this way, which is just say the H1 um, using the table A20 as a function of T1 minus the H at the reference, um, I'm going to put 273 Kelvin because that's what the uh, uh, table A, what is it, table A22, table A22 uses. All right, this is just another way of making this calculation. And then um, continuing, we would have plus omega HG1, all of that is for the um, moist air enthalpy at the inlet state. And then we have plus, let's try this, H, um, let me put it T2 minus H of the air at the T reference. Um, I know I'm botching this a little bit. Get rid of that subscript right there. And that T reference is 273 Kelvin or zero degrees C, okay, plus omega times HG2, close like that. It's very common. Um, then you have the mass flow rate of the dry air, just like that. Okay, well, well, let's break it down. Let's uh, say we're coming in at 30 degrees C. We can add 273 to 30 degrees C, you pick up what 303 Kelvin, and this temperature right here would be 293 Kelvin. And we can go and get these two values. We have to do interpolation to get enthalpy at 273, but that's doable. And then this would be the um, 30.09 for the first two components, and this one would be. Uh, 20.05 then you add to it the humidity ratio times H of G okay did we calculate the humidity ratio no we didn't I need a little bit of room up here so Omega 1 is equal to the Omega 0 0.622 PV over P total minus PV so let me just knock out these numbers 0 0.622 our vapor pressure 2.123 and then we have 200 minus 2.123 when we calculate omega we find that that comes in at 0 0.00667 uh, 
All right, and that's the same at the outlet. So we know these two values, 0 0.00667, 0 0.00667. Okay, what about H of G? Well, that's the saturated vapor enthalpy at 30 degrees C that comes in at 2556.3. And H of G at 20 degrees C comes in at 2538.1 degrees C. All right. So what you can do is you can find that you have a, a molar, not a molar, a mixture enthalpy 47.15 minus 36.99. Those are all units of kilojoules per kilogram of the dry air. I need to scoot down a little bit, but right up here, what do they give us? It has a mass flow rate of 600 kilograms per hour. Okay, well, what is the that mass flow rate? Is that our total mass flow rate? So... So our mass flow rate um, of the mixture would be the uh, mass flow rate of dry air times 1 plus the humidity ratio. That's from a, a total uh, mass balance. Okay, so this one, if you had um, 600 kilograms per hour then the mass flow rate of the dry air one plus point oh oh six six seven not a whole lot of change there and you would find the mass flow rate of the dry air is a little bit less than that 600 kilograms per hour what we're going to do is we're just going to assume that this is the true that, that this is negligible here i just want to show that uh, sometimes you, you have to look. Are they giving me the mass flow rate of the dry air, mass flow rate of the mixture, which is dry air plus water vapor? And how would I make that conversion between the two? You just have one plus humidity ratio because this is um, this would be like 1.00667. It's not. It's very close to one. So okay. So. We'll just put in right here the mass flow rate of the dry air is 600 kilograms per hour. And you calculate that Q dot comes in at so many uh, joules or kilojoules per hour, 6,103 kilojoules per hour. So that Q dot comes in at 1.69 five kilowatts we would round that off to 1.70 kilowatts so there you go one of the things i need to really emphasize is that when you see a pressure here that is not near one atm it's not close to one atmosphere pressure then you cannot use the psychrometric chart you need to solve it by hand, as I've shown, or get a psychrometric chart for that particular um, pressure, the total gas pressure, which computer programs can handle that. But uh, the psychrometric chart in our textbook um, is at 1 ATM. Okay, so with that, we're done with this problem. Hopefully that helps.